Hello, I'm Naohiro Aota. I'm working at Western Digital Research System Software Group. I'm talking about file system native support of zoned block devices. In particular, it focuses on regular write versus zone append writing. Here is the outline of this session. First, I briefly introduce zoned block device. Next, I show you Linux ZBD support in F2FS. ZoneFS is detailed in other talks, so please visit the session. The third part is the main part of this talk. I describe the ongoing ZBD support for ButterFS. So what are programs to support ZBD in ButterFS and how I solve them. And here I compare two methods of writing, layer light and zone append writing in detail. And finally, I show you some performance evaluation result. Okay, let's start. First of all, what is zone block device? In short, it is a special storage device whose address space is separated to several zones. Those zones have the different light constraint from regular storage devices. ZBD is standardized with ZBC and ZSC for SML, single magnetic recording hard disks, and NVMe ZNS for SSDs. Its LVA range is divided into zones. Zones can be conventional zones, which accept random writes as the, the same as regular storage. Or sequential write requires zones. In this zone, writes must be issued sequentially starting from the write pointer. This write pointer moves along with the writes and zones must be reset before rewriting. So the reset operation divides the light pointer. Users of zoned block devices must be aware of this sequential write rule. If not, for example, if the user write data to an address other than the light pointer, it becomes an aligned write error. So that means random write is prohibited. Next, how to access ZBD from Linux? There are several ways to access it. For example, the red circle one, the second one from the right is slow block access. This method provide uh, minimal support. So you can issue zone management command like reporting zone status or zone resetting through zone IO control. And applications write order is preserved through the kernel to disks. However, ZBD's sequential write constraint is exposed as is to users. To us, users must be aware of the zone constraint. So the application must be ZBD compliant. And that means legacy applications won't work with this interface, of course. More advanced support is provided through file system interface, which is circled with green lines. Uh, it provides POSIX interface and no sequential write constraint is faced to users. So legacy application can work on it transparently. Currently, F2FS and ZoneFS is upstreamed and ButterFS is ongoing work. Now I introduce F2FS support for ZBDs. F2FS natively supports ZBDs since Linux 4.10. It is based on F2FS 
error has mode. So layer F3FS has the optimization to do update in place for metadata block for performance reasons. But in this LFS mode, the optimization is disabled. So F2FS with this mode become pure row structured operation without any overwriting. But even with pure log structured operations, we still, uh, still two things must be addressed. One is block allocation. F2FS divides disk space with two megabyte segments and group some number of segments into one section. For ZBD support, this segment is aligned to device zones. So that sequential allocation of segment in a section naturally becomes sequential use of device zones. The second point is atomicity of allocation and right IO issuing. Uh, consider block A and B is allocated in this order. If without atomicity, right order can be B, then A. Then, since block B does not point to the right pointer, uh, because we have block A before block B, it causes uh, unlined right error, which will fail the file system. Thus, we need to add lock per section that means per zones. To ensure uh, sequential right ordering derived from sequential allocation. And even with these two components fixed, one problem still ex exists in F2FS ZBD support. It requires conventional zones to accommodate update to fix rotation metadata blocks. So if you want to run F2FS on ZNS, it needs multiple devices to work. So regular device or SMR device to save metadata and ZNS for data, for example. So this is the main part, but I have native ZBD support. But I have is a copy on write file system. And so it is uh, natural. It is good for ZBD support. So, but still, we need to satisfy ZBD sequential right constraint in BataFS. That, of course, BataFS is not currently zone aware. For example, a device extent may not align to zones. BataFS allocate and use a fixed size region from devices as a device extent. Uh, typical SRM disks zone size is 256 megabyte, but BataFS device extent is 1 gigabyte for data and 256 megabyte for metadata. So metadata device extent is fine with this setup, but uh, data device extent can spam multiple zones which makes the zone management really complicated. So we need to modify device extent allocator so that they don't spam multiple device zones. Second point, copy on write looks really similar to sequential writing, but they are not the same. For example, the using of allocated address. Consider a user write file A, sync and remove the file A. 
data of file A is once allocated and written to disk. Now, and the user writes new file B. The region used for file A is reused for file B because it is now empty. But this breaks the sequential writing rule of ZBDs. And uh, furthermore, not all blocks are copy and write it on Bata FS actually. It is super block. Super blocks are overwritten at fixed location. So we need to modify two areas to solve these problems. One is device extent layout. The other is sequential data and metadata write back zone. For this point, we have two possible implementation using a regular write command or zone pen write command, which is the main, main topic of this session. Okay. Let me describe the detail one by one. The first part, and zone aware device extent management. To easy light pointer management, we decided to map one device extent to one zone. One zone is 256 megabytes for most SML disk on the market today. So size of device extent is changed to the zone size, regardless of data type. Now, with the setup, block group is naturally aligned to zones for all RAID levels. And we added a new allocator for zoned block device. This allocator always allocates the blocks sequentially so no reusing. So device extent aligned to zone and we do sequential allocation. Is that enough? Of course not. The next part address is sequential block right back. For uh, to achieve sequential block right back, right back, there are two possibilities. One is to use regular write command directed to directed at zone write pointer. The other even is to use zone append write command. So what is zone append write command? So a point write command does not explicitly target LBA to write data. Instead, it only specify a zone to write using the zones start LBA. Then device uh, automatically writes data at the zone write pointer. And a position of written blocks is written in command reply. So this is quite similar to nameless write. So now we have a two option. For a regular write command, we need sequential block allocation and sequential bio issuing as uh, same as in F2FS. And for zone up and write command, we need resolving blocks in the block group and issue writing. Here, difference is order is not matter because the device can properly handle the orders. But we need it we need to update block allocation information after the write compression. It is quite tricky for file systems since they usually decide the 
written position before writing. Okay, let's see the battery face uh, light IU pass. Battery face has several data lighting pass. Normal and compressed light, uh, compressed light, light into pre-allocated region or direct IO. This right here shows overview of normal light and compressed light. And there are two problems within normal light pass for ZBD. First problem is that allocation and IO submission is not atomic. As a result, it can happen that uh, allocated blocks for process A and B can be issued in reverse order. So B then A. It again breaks the sequential light rule. Second problem is asynchronous checksum. During the light, light pass, data is pushed into checksum queue. And a checksum worker grabs the data, calculates the checksum of it, and actually submits the IO to devices. Since there exist multiple workers, data is not always submitted to the disk with five manner in the compression queue. So the ordering happens again here and it breaks the sequential rule. So we cannot use this uh, normal writing pass for a ZBD with uh, normal write command. So how to solve it? Fortunately, we have nearly ideal IO pass. Uh, take a look at the uh, right side of here. It is compressed right past. It first uh, compressed the data within the worker queue. And after the compression, we see really good IO pass here. It allocates uh, and submits the IO in the same context. And its checksum process is uh, done in place. So we can write just like this, provided uh, async checksum is disabled. So we added delicate write pass of uncompressed write in zones and it behave like compressed pass without compression things. So arcade, I'll page to BIOS and synchronously check sum and submit BIO. So now how to implement the sequential data write in BataFS? First of all, it disabled asynchronous check sum not to break the order there, like in compression pass. And we add a power block group mutex. It is taken at the time of allocation and released after all the pages in the allocated extent is submitted. As a result, now allocation and submit are atomic. Currently, uh, we are using a uh, simple mutex logs, which possibly reduce paral parallelism. If the, uh, some later process try to allocate the locked from the locked block group. But uh, since the mutex is per block group, we can use try lock and just skip the locked block group and try another block group or allocate new block group. Then with this modification, parallel operations are still possible with uh, different block groups. 
but uh, it can increase the uh, fragmentation because the uh, data may data will go spread to many block groups. So the previous slides was using normal write command. How about uh, zone open writing? With zone open writing, we do not need to decide where to write uh, specifically. We only need to choose a block group to write and these are blocks for the write written data. Since the bio issue order does not matter, no need to lock the block group. And also we can now utilize asynchronous checksum and it lead to better CPU utilization. But on the other hand, we need to track uh, allocation metadata after the data is written to device. That is, uh, that is when the final written address is uh, known. So I have implemented the open data writing for but iOS, but uh, there are some limitations left. First, uh, no rate level uh, supported. Uh, this is because we cannot handle two zone open writes commands sent to different zones or devices. For example, uh, consider a red one mirroring but iOS. One block group is mapped to two device extents and these two extents should have exactly same data on the same offset from the beginning of the zone. However, two zone append command uh, for each device can be written in different offset depending on the timing back to you or something. So that means uh, if that happens, it breaks the right one mirroring. So we cannot uh, use late with zone append right command currently. To support uh, right level with zone append right command, uh, we need more fine-grained uh, mapping of uh, logical, fine-grained uh, logical to physical mapping but it requires a new metadata. So currently it is disabled. Second, fragmentation of file extents. Currently with the same reason as no red level support, uh, only one IO should be issued for one file extent. Uh, if not, two IOs can be written to non contiguous region on disk, and we cannot map the one file extent, which should be contiguous on disk to the separated regions. And uh, zone append write command has an upper limit to work. For example, uh, five, 500 and 12 kilobytes, uh, which tend to be smaller than maximum size or file extent. This limitation is applied also to file extent by the one IO equal one file extent rule. So it results in increased number of file extents compared to regular but IOS. And uh, the possibility to have a fragmented file extent will increase with heavy workload. And final one 
it still use the get write pass similar to normal write command on ZBD. The write pass, uh, of course, eliminates the lock and the enables the asynchronous checksum, but it always writes whole range of reserved file extent. On the other hand, regular butterfs normal write pass can skip writing out or part of the such reserved file extent. Uh, for example, when handling a data sync to sync, so by writing out the only the region with data sync is related, it can improve the performance. To use uh, normal plus, we need to split an uh, existing file extent before submitting bio to obey the one IO equal one file extent rule. Okay, I described the data side of writing with normal write and zone up and writing. How about metadata? Metadata block is also allocated like in data block group. So always sequential and no reusing of uh, previously allocated blocks. But uh, we cannot use zone append writing for metadata because uh, B3 nodes have references to other nodes using the address. So with zone append writing, we cannot know where the address is, where the node address is before writing. To us, uh, we cannot build the B3 in the first place. So uh, for metadata, we use a normal write command. But a good point of metadata is metadata writes uh, grouped per transactions. All metadata in active transaction are basically written sequentially. So we do not need atomic allocation and writing here. So there may be little um, benefit from switching to zone pen writing. But a uh, bad point is during a uh, bit manipulation, three node block can be much or uh, spread. So as a result, some three node block may become unused during transaction. Regular butterflies optimize uh, not to write such uh, once allocated, but no longer used uh, three node blocks. But it is problem for ZBDs. Uh, it breaks the sequential write rule again. So zone but I always write uh, dummy zero field node blocks instead. So now uh, data and metadata are sequential. And one thing left, super block. Superblock is the only fixed rotation data structure in ButterFS. To update Superblock in place, it requires a conventional zone. So how about limiting Superblock location to conventional zones? It is simple solution, but uh, it has problems. It reduces the number of Superblock copy because the second copy location, which is to 56 gigabyte, is typically on sequential zones, resulting a reduced number of uh, reduced reliability of superblock. Uh, superblock is really, really, really important for file system, so we should avoid that. And 
research and limiting to conventional zone method will work on device without conventional zones like ZNS. So we Im implemented uh, superblock low lighting. This method uses uh, two zones as a uh, ring buffer. Start writing from the first zone, write next version of superblock and next to the next to it. Once the first zone is filled up, continue to second zone. Then when the both zones are filled, and reset the first zone and back to the first zone. Um, so, and we can detect the latest superblock position using the zone's light pointers. So, we can read out the latest version. Okay. And this thing uh, detail is described. And now let's see the performance. I used two hardware in the experiment. First one is regular. It is just a regular 12 terabyte SATA disk. Second one is zoned. It is a 16 terabyte SATA disk with ZBC firmware, uh, host managed model. It has the same mechanics as regular, so the mapping and mechanical performance should be the same, so that we can compare software stack performance difference. Um, but for some reason on my environment, uh, zone disk is 10 to 15% slower, even with a simple DD sequential writing or reading. So please keep in mind the seeing when seeing the result. And for zoned, we learn normal light case and zone open light case. And uh, for the experiment, I use DM linear to skip uh, conventional zones on the zone device to show the performance of zone open lighting, which only workable on sequential zones, of course. To, mm, to show, um, so regular case also map to the same uh, LV region to use the same condition. On these devices, we run two type of workloads. One is data workload, uh, FIO, Operation are uh, write only, read only, and read write case. With file size of one megabyte to four megabyte random size case and fixed size to 56 megabyte case, which is equal to zone size. And number of jobs is one, two, four, up to 64. The second one is metadata heavy workload, uh, D-Bench, actually, uh, Extinct heavy workload, with number of client to be one, two, four, eight, up to 32. So let's look at uh, FIO result. Uh, left one is small files workload with one megabyte to four megabyte random file size. Right one is larger files workloads with fixed to 56 megabyte file size. So results shows uh, zone is degrading 10 to 20% from regular, but this is due to the SMR disk use is 13% slower sequential reads than regular, as I said. In with considering that uh, difference, um, zone and regular can be seen 
and some are competitive. For zone case, uh, no, we have no more right and zone open right, and they are competitive here. Actually, the, since this is read only workload, there are no difference here. And by increasing the number of jobs, seek overhead will also increase. So as a result, we see performance degradation. Next, uh, right only case. Uh, again, the zone is degraded as in the lead case, but it is because of the device, device performance difference. Again, and uh, zone regular and zone append are uh, competitive also here. Uh, actually, the zone append is slightly uh, better than zone regular. And uh, all these three showing their stable performance. And uh, if I will file read and write uh, mixed case, uh, this case 70% work uh, is, is read and 30% writes. There is uh, some degradation of zone. And comparing the zone append and zone regular, zone append is up to 6% better than zone regular. So, Zone append uh, is improving the performance. Now let's look at the result of the event. This is the Xing Heavy Workload. So, Legra is scaling well, as you can see. However, uh, zone failed to scale not that much. Um, I'm not completely sure, but uh, recently Linux 5.7 improved the butterfly's exchange performance by removing some logs in exchange hot bus. Uh, however, uh, for zone case handling, uh, we still have other logs left in the pass. To us, I guess zone cannot catch up with the implement uh, the improvement that might that um, describes the performance difference here. Uh, in the previous version, actually uh, zone and regular is showing the uh, almost the same result. And uh, same here, zone regular and zone append are competitive. So, mm, this is final uh, benchmark. To confirm the benefit of zone append writing, I ran uh, some ex uh, extreme case for zone locking. Uh, this workload ran 16 random writing jobs with 4 kilobyte IO size. So they are massive competing on the same zone. Throughput result is showing the right figure. As you can see, zone up and writing is better than zone regular. Uh, it's bit it's better than uh, zoned regular by 36%. And for some reason, even better than regular case. So removing the zone locks is quite useful for such a uh, heavy and small IO case. Finally, I talk about current status and some future things. I have uh, posted the zone butterflies with regular write commands uh, several months ago. Next is we'll target uh, zone append supports. So it can keep asynchronous checksum 
and no additional locking in the light pass. And as you can, as you see, uh, it improves the performance compared to normal regular light command. Uh, but to make it work on both SMR HDDs and ZNS SSDs, SCSI disk driver need to emulate a zone up and write command. Uh, this emulation patch is already upstreamed. And uh, plan, there is plan optimization for uh, zone up and writing. So one is removing dedicated write pass and uh, improves performance on small IO plus existing case. And the other one is opportunity merging of file extent after and bio, which reduces the fragmentation and usage of metadata. And this feature will be also useful for the uh, data text. And uh, yeah, I need to support a uh, light level, maybe, with uh, adding some metadata, uh, adding some new metadata, maybe, but uh, we need more discussion in the list, so this is, um, it will be really future work. Okay, uh, that's all. Thank you for listening.